everybody. How's everybody doing? I'm so glad you're here. I've missed you all. I've been gone for a little bit, just a tiny bit, no big deal. Um, but welcome to my channel if you're new here. My name's Cherie, and I'd appreciate it if you'd like this video and subscribe to the channel. We do all kinds of fun, th uh, fun things on here. You can take a look at my video list and see. Uh, we also do some scripture writing a little bit. I put a little plan in the community section of my page and uh, people follow that sometimes and do scripture writing or whatever one they want to do. But anyway, um, I do the Charles Stanley uh, In Touch magazine and um, it's on contentment. Uh, yesterday's and today's was too and so I think it's tomorrow's. But um, anyway, I thought I'd read over uh, yesterday's to get a little background. And then we go over today's real quick, if you want. Um, I appreciate you all being here with me. Um, I, uh, I'm trying to get my camera fixed. I'm sorry. I thought I had it fixed and I moved it. <laughs> but anyway, um, if you want to, if you have the Charles Stanley uh, In Touch devotional, which is like this this month, looks like this, you can go to, I think, intouch.org and get these. But, uh, yeah, that is, uh, that's what it looks like. And, uh, anyway, you can get on a mailing list and get those sent to you. Now, yesterday's is talking about contentment, like I said. And, uh, just down a bit. It says, the secret of contentment. And the verses for yesterday's was Philippians 4, 4 through 13. And if you want, we can read through those real quick. Philippians 4, 4 through 13. So go to Philippians. Or if you want to pause this and get your Bible, it's in the back of Philippians. And if I can get my eyes to focus. Hi, Gizmo. If I could catch him, I'd get him up here for you all to see him. He goes and gets his hair done today. Okay, um, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your graciousness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Don't worry about anything, but in everything, through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God will surpass all understanding, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any moral excellence and if there's anything praiseworthy, dwell on these things. Do what you have learned and received and heard from me and seen in me and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly because once again you renewed your care for me. You were, in fact, concerned about me, but I lacked the opportunity to show it. I don't say this out of need, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I find myself. I know both how to make do with little, and I know how to make do with a lot. In any, of all, any and all circumstances, I've learned the secret of being content, whether well-fed or hungry, whether in abundance or in need, I'm able to do all things through him who strengthens me. And then it says, still you did well by partnering with me in my hardship. That we can do all things through God who strengthens me. And amen to that. Now, the devotional says, does it surprise you that Paul wrote today's passage when he was in prison? He wrote all that when he was in prison. He didn't know what his future held, whether he'd be free, freed or punished or killed. But he had learned to be content in all circumstances, good or bad. How many of us can make that claim? It's not uncommon to feel discontentment when we cannot control our situation. And as long as our satisfaction depends on whether certain things work out, 
circumstances will continue to steal our peace. I'm going to read that again. As long as our satisfaction depends on whether circumstances and certain things work out. As long as our satisfaction depends on whether certain things work out. Circumstances will continue to steal our peace. Paul was not saying that we'll never experience anxiety or frustration again. Rather, what matters is how we respond when those feelings grip us. This is something Paul had to learn. He endured tremendous suffering from shipwrecks and hunger to unjust imprisonment and beatings. <clears throat> he knew as well as anyone that situations can be painful and seemingly hopeless. But he finally discovered that true contentment came from Jesus, not the situation he found himself in. How do you respond when circumstances are out of your control? I panic. I go into a full-blown panic usually. Uh control big issue with me sometimes paul chose to give his anxieties to jesus in exchange for peace that surpasses all comprehension that same peace is available to you and me now in the book of john chapter 4 verses 7 through 14 it says john chapter 4 Hang on, let me get to the right chapter. I'm in the wrong chapter. John chapter 4. Doodle, 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 doodle. Verses 7 through 14. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Give me a drink, Jesus said to her, because his disciples had gone into town to buy food. How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? She asked him, for Jews do not associate with Samaritans. And Jesus answered, If you knew the gift of God, and who is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would ask him, and you would ask him, and he would give you living water. Sir, said the woman, you don't even have a bucket, and the well is deep. So where do you get this living water? You aren't greater than our father Jacob, are you? He gave us the well and drank from it himself, as his sons did, as his sons and livestock. Let me do that again. He gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and livestock. Jesus said, everyone who drinks from this water will get thirsty again, but whoever drinks from the water that I will give him will never get thirsty again. In fact, the water I will give him will become a well of water springing up in him from return eternal life. Sir, the woman said to him, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and come here to draw water. And he goes on to tell the story of the Samaritan woman. Um, okay, it says here on the 29th of June, true contentment is determined by our attitude and responses rather than our circumstances. True contentment is determined by our attitude and responses rather than our circumstances. And because Paul had learned this secret, he was able to experience joy and peace in any kind of situation. The apostle understood what it meant to live in Christ and to have Christ living in him. He knew that the treasure he possessed within could never be stolen, and that gave Paul confidence in his identity as a child of God with full access to the abundant life Jesus offers. I want to challenge you this week, when something threat threatens to steal your contentment, choose to lean on God. When you find yourself becoming anxious or angry, stop and say, Lord, you are my source. Provide me with the capacity to be kind, the forgiveness I need to extend, and the love I need to express. Watch and see how God will quiet your spirit and provide confidence when you draw from Him as your source. You'll be surprised at your own attitude. When you respond from within rather than from the flesh, Jesus will lead you to genuine contentment. And that's good if we're content, you know, comfortable in our own skin, okay the way we are. You know, if something comes along and ruffles that a little, you know, we tend to freak out, or I do anyway. Uh, you know, we want to fix it. You know, we want things back to normal. And uh, as long as we go to God when we um, 
get in those situations and get frustrated and angry and stressed out, go to God and do what this says right here. It says, watch and see how God will quiet your spirit and provide confidence when you draw from him as your source. It says, when you find yourself becoming anxious or angry, stop and say, Lord, you are my source. Provide me with the capacity to be kind, the forgiveness I need to extend, and the love I need to express. <laughs> Hi, Gizmo. Hi, Gizmo. I don't know if I can get you all to see him or not. Let me see if you all can get him there. Let me see if I can get him in here. Let's see. I, I can't because i got to do it this way. Can you see him? There he is. Say hi. See, I got my popsicle. Yeah, see, I got my popsicle. Hi, Gizzy. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it, Kiss. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. <laughs> I'm going to get it, Kiss. <laughs> oh, Gizmo, he's a bright. I tell you, he keeps us on our toes. He really does. He really, really does. Well, hang on. I'm flicking you around every which way. I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyway, we have got to stay and be in content and go to God when we have questions or concerns. And he'll get us straightened out. He'll, uh, he'll show us the way. Well, that was my lesson for today uh, on contentment and being content. And uh, I just wanted you all to know that... Uh, I'll get on here when I can. I don't know how often it'll be. I uh, appreciate your support in my channel and subscribing and liking and commenting. And that helps me a lot too um, whenever you all do that. So anyway, I just wanted to say hi and hope you're all having a great week. And remember to live, love, laugh, and laugh some more because laughter is the best medicine. And I'll see you all back here real soon. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.